dear students after studying this module you shall be able to know what is the meaning of asymmetric synthesis understand various aspects and definition of asymmetric synthesis learn about nature's chiral pool and its importance in asymmetric synthesis analyze various examples based on nature's chiral pool serving as precursors for asymmetric synthesis study other examples and case studies relating to asymmetric synthesis absolute asymmetric synthesis or asymmetric induction is the synthesis of optically active products from a chiral or racemic precursors without employing optically active catalysts or auxiliaries the synthesis of a racemic which is 50 50 mixture of both the enantiomers version was historically accepted as a successful outcome but that is no longer the case synthetic organic chemists remain interested not only in mimicking the nature but also in synthesizing the totally novel chiral structures if organic chemists wish to synthesize the molecules produced by nature then they must be able to prepare the same enantiomer which occurs naturally for example for a perfumer or a flavor and fragrance manufacturer the distinction between the enantiomer of the same molecule is clearly of a great importance in this module we shall learn about different aspects and some of very fascinating aspects about the asymmetric synthesis which will help in kindling a new enthusiasm about this topic in actual words asymmetric synthesis means a reaction that uses optically inactive reactants and catalysts cannot produce a product that is optically active any chiral product must be formed as a racemic mixture because the transition states leading to the two enantiomers are themselves enantiomeric and therefore equal in energy or the reaction between two optically inactive a chiral partners always leads to an optically inactive product either racemic or meso also optical activity does not occur from optically inactive products optically active products cannot be produced from optically inactive reactants asymmetric synthesis potential energy diagram has been represented here in the given figure asymmetric synthesis or induction is only tenuously different from the kinetic resolution the difference is that the asymmetric atom instead of being in a molecule to begin with is introduced in the course of reaction a fine example is the synthesis of gluconitrile and mannonitrile from plus arabinose since the two products are diastereomeric thus the transition state leading to them would also be expected to be diastereomeric this makes them different in the respective free energies since the starting state plus arabinose is the same for the two reactions the activation energies are expected to be different and the rate at which the two products are formed will also be different in fact before the actual findings it was believed that mannoic acid nitrile predominated to such an extent that it was believed to be the product of this reaction asymmetric synthesis borrowing from nature's chiral pool most asymmetric synthesis generally require more than one or two steps from chiral pool constituents if there happens to be an existing chiral center the two possible transition states are diastereomeric and can be of different energy thus one isomer of the new stereogenic center can be produced in a larger amount as can be seen here in the potential energy diagram the various stages of the transition state 
the reaction mechanism shows the production of one stereoisomer in a larger quantity as compared to the other. Let us look at the certain case studies. Case 1. A male bark beetles belong to the genus IPS produces a pheromone that is a mixture of several enantiomerically pure compounds. One of them being a simple diene alcohol which is S minus epsinol. In the year 1970s, Japanese chemist noted the similarity of part of the structure of epsinol which is represented here in black to the widely available amino acid S minus leucine and decided to exploit this in a chiral pool synthesis. Using the stereogenic center as shown by the green ring of leucine to provide the stereogenic center for epsinol. This is the reaction pathway showing the possible retrosynthesis of S minus epsinol. The amino group needs to be converted to a hydroxyl group with the retention of configuration as can be seen here. The process of diazotization followed by hydrolysis performs the same reactions because of the neighboring group participation of from the carboxylic acid. The tetrahydropyran derivative was prepared for the protection of the alcohol. Reduction of the acid via the ester allows the introduction of the tocyl leaving group which was replaced to make an epoxide. The epoxide reacted with the Grignard reagent carrying the diene portion of the target molecule. Another case can be considered for an insect pheromone synthesis illustrating one of the drawbacks of the chiral pool approaches. The ambrosia beetle aggregation pheromone is called sulcatol and is chemically a simple secondary alcohol. This pheromone poses a rather unusual synthetic problem. The beetles produces it as 65 is to 35 mixture of the two enantiomers. So, in order to mimic the pheromone effect, thus the challenge for the chemist remains to synthesize both the enantiomers separately and mix them together in the right proportion. One approach to the R enantiomer employs a sugar found in DNA to deoxy D ribose as a source of chirality. Only one ring with the green again as depicted here in the given figure of the two defined chiral centers in the sugar appears in the product. So, after protecting the hemiacetal, the two free hydroxyl groups were removed by mesylation, substitution by iodide and finally the reduction. A simple olefination gave R sulcatol. Sugars often need simplifying in this way because only rarely are all their chiral centers needed in the final product. Since the L sugar is unavailable, even D deoxyribose is quite expensive, thus S sulcatol cannot be made by this route. So, an alternative synthesis was needed that could be adapted to give other either of the isomers. The solution is to go back to another hydroxy acid, ethyl lactate, which is more widely available as its S enantiomer, but which can be converted simply to either enantiomer of a key epoxide intermediate. From S ethyl lactate, Protection of the alcohol, reduction of the ester and tocylation allowing the ring closure to one enantiomer of the epoxide. Tocylation of the secondary hydroxyl group followed by reduction and ring closure gives the other enantiomer. The given sequence depicts the following reaction mechanism. For this reason, the two enantiomers of propylene oxide are commonly used as chiral pool starting materials. These epoxides react with the appropriate Grignard reagent to give either enantiomer of sulcatol 
as can be seen in the figure the chiral pool of the starting materials is shown. For the target molecules having more than one stereogenic center only one needs to be borrowed from the chiral pool provided diastereoselective reactions can be employed to introduce the others with control over relative stereochemistry. Since the first chiral center has defined the absolute configuration, any diastereoselective reaction that controls the relative stereochemistry of the new chiral center also defines its absolute configuration. In this synthesis of the rare amino sugar methyl mycamino side only one chiral center comes directly from the chiral pool. The rest are introduced diastereoselectively. As can be seen here lactic acid being converted into methyl mycamanocide. In this synthesis only one chiral center comes directly from the chiral pool while the others are introduced diastereoselectively. The ring was built up from acetylated S lactic acid and a cyclization step introduce the second chiral center. The methyl group goes pseudo equatorial while the pseudo axial position is preferred by the methoxy group because of the enomeric effect shown here in the given figure and a sequence of reactions. Note that the pseudo axial positions is preferred by the methoxy group because of the enomeric effect. The third stereogenic center was controlled by axial reduction of the ketone to give the equatorial alcohol which then directed introduction of the fourth and the fifth stereogenic centers by epoxidation. The attack at the carbonyl position is shown here by the H plus ion. The axial attack leads to more stable equatorial alcohol and the hydroxyl group directs the epoxidation to the top face by the hydrogen bonding. Finally, the simple nucleophilic amine Me2NH attacks the epoxide with inversion of configuration to give methyl mica aminoside. The conformational drawings show that all these substituents are equatorial except the methoxyl group which prefers to be axial again because of the enomeric effect. The disadvantage of the chiral pool approach is that the compound you make has to be quite close to the structure to one of the natural products that are readily available. Otherwise, if this is not the case, the synthetic route becomes so strenuous that it is even more wasteful than resolution. The second major disadvantage is the lack of availability of both the enantiomers of most natural products, especially useful starting materials like amino acids and sugars. We have just confronted this problem with the synthesis of sulcatol from deoxyribose. As a further example, we can return again to our Japanese beetles. Their pheromone can be made from glutamic acid by a short route. Unfortunately, when widely available S plus glutamic acid is used, the product is the enantiomer of the active pheromone, which you will remember is a powerful inhibitor of natural pheromone. Making the right enantiomer is not economical for chemist because R minus glutamic acid is about 40 times more expensive than the S plus glutamic acid. As can be seen here in the mechanism, attempted chiral pool synthesis of the Japanese beetle pheromone is shown. The chiral auxiliary strategy. This strategy involves these steps. An enantiomerically pure compound usually derived from a simple natural product like an amino acid called a chiral auxiliary is attached to the starting material. A diastereoselective reaction is carried out which because of the enantiomeric purity of the chiral auxiliary gives only one enantiomer of the product. 
the chiral auxiliary is removed by for example, hydrolysis leaving the product of the reaction as a single enantiomer. The best chiral auxiliaries of which the example above is one can be recycled. So, all those stoichiometric quantities are needed there is no waste. Racemic mixture is the product of normal Diels elder reaction. However, if we replace the achiral benzyl ester group with the amide derived from the natural amino acid valine. The diastero selectivity remains the same, but the chiral environment created by the single enantiomer covalently bonded to the dienophile has a remarkable effect only one enantiomer of the product is formed. A chiral auxiliary strategy of the molecules is shown here in the given figures. Chiral reagents and chiral catalyst. If we want to create a new chiral center in a molecule, our starting material must have prochirality, the ability to become chiral in one simple transformation. The most common prochiral units that give rise to a new chiral centers are the trigonal carbon atoms of alkenes and the carbonyl groups which become tetrahedral by addition reactions. A prochiral alkene, we can count enolates as an alkene for this purpose, reacted selectively on one phase because of the influence of the chiral auxiliary, which made the phases of the alkene diastereotopic. One of the simplest transformations you could imagine of a prochiral unit into a chiral one is the reduction of a ketone. Although chiral auxiliary strategies have been used to make this type of a reaction asymmetric, you will appreciate that conceptually the simplest way of getting the product as a single enantiomer would be to use a chiral reducing agent. In other words, to attach the chiral influence not to the substrate as we did with the chiral auxiliaries, but to the reagent. As can be seen here, the reduction of a ketone for the introduction of a prochiral unit using sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. The table discusses the comparison of all the methods studied in this module to achieve the asymmetric synthesis. Using the chiral pool, 100 percent guaranteed asymmetric synthesis was achieved, where the disadvantage could have often only be the presence of one enantiomer and the examples can be amino acid, sugar derived synthesis. Other examples with the chiral auxiliary, chiral reagents and chiral re catalyst have been tabulated. To summarize, in this module, we have taught you that the absolute asymmetric synthesis or asymmetric induction is the synthesis of optically active products from achiral or racemic precursors without employing optically active catalyst or auxiliaries. Any chiral product must be formed as a racemic mixture because the transition states leading to the two enantiomers are themselves enantiomeric and therefore equal in energy. Asymmetric synthesis or asymmetric induction is only tenuously different from kinetic resolution. The difference is that the asymmetric atom instead of being in a molecule to begin with is introduced in the course of reaction. Most asymmetric synthesis require rather more than one or two steps from the chiral pool constituents. When there is an existing chiral center, the two possible transition states are diastereomeric and can often be of different energy. Thus, one isomer of a new stereogenic center can be produced in a larger amount. Various methods for carrying out asymmetric synthesis and their pros and cons have been discussed in the given module.